I am still waiting for my parts. Um, in the meantime, I pulled the uh, EDC and uh, at some point I guess I swapped out I don't know if I did this or not I think I did this but so this is the wrong coil this is the right coil the difference is this coil sits on the outside all the connections are on the outside uh, except the ground which apparently sits in behind this one I'm not sure I guess I had a bad coil and I just threw this in but it does not fit the way it's supposed to so the way I did it had this wire jammed up against uh, the inside of the plate so that's not right I'm gonna I have the right coils so I'm gonna put those in you can put the wrong coils in just make sure you don't let anything short out not sure what this was. I didn't do that. I don't think. I hope I didn't. I might have. I don't know. Hmm. So what did I do? I ended up putting it this way? I don't know. Took it apart. Can't remember. But this is the wrong one. So I'll put the right one in and when these coils should they fail I have spares of these I'm just going to rework the mounts so that they fit better sit right so that's all out now and the next thing I have to do while I'm waiting for my parts I need to cut this plate somewhere in here because ah, oh, I'm gonna turn the lights on. Hang on. Maybe. Let's go. Let's, there we go. <clears throat> oh, battery's dead. Um. Yeah, I want to get this down well enough so that I can catch. There's a bolt option here and here. So I want to drill holes here and here. So I need to cut this a little bit high. Uh, and I just realized that's aluminum. So I was, <clears throat> I was hoping that I could undo what I'm about to do. Uh, if things went horribly wrong but clearly that's not going to happen so I'm just going to butcher this plate I guess <clears throat> make the setup work for uh, dual carb and <coughs> I'm too bad sacrifice the plate so that's where I'm at the OCD part of the work so the bolts here were missing um, I was able to find a couple that fit but I gotta cut them down and then I cut this one down but I cut it down a little bit too long and the washer I have needs to be cut down a little bit too. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So that secures this piece. But I'm not done there. Because I now have to get. Let's see here. So once that's in, I have to get this here. And now this is only holding by two bolts. So I need to build a spacer and I would like one right down here and how do I want to do that I can either do a bracket 
off of these two and come up. I don't know if I got a gap. Yes, I must have a gap. Or I could just go a spacer right through to this and weld a nut on the back side of it. That might be easier. These little things now that I want to put them off because they're little and they mean they just... I want to put them off. I don't have the bigger parts. So I don't really want to play with this. But I know I'm going to have to deal with it at some point. And uh, because I don't have the big stuff to play with. Like a couple washers I need to cut. This bolt I need to cut down. This one as well. This coil I need to swap out. And then I need hardware to remount. Might be able to use some of what's here. But I don't have enough. Yeah, now I'm just chasing down hardware. Um, it's the little things at this point. Might as well have them ready. I'm just going to show quickly what I ended up doing with this this plate <clears throat> I uh, installed everything put the bolts in scratched it around to make sure I got everything right a couple clamps um, so my coils are still gonna fit in here and then <clears throat> There were easier ways to do this, but for some reason I have to do it the hard way. I wanted a single bolt at the right height, just in between these two pieces, and exactly right so I can get a socket on there. Now the next person that owns this machine after me and they need to take this apart this might drive them crazy because you're not going to be able to see that this bolt is here from the top but whatever this is what I ended up doing I found uh, the right length bolt spacer washer not to hold all this together because this part cannot come away like too many pieces when you're down in the engine so this is the only piece you have to put on uh, yeah so when you're looking at it from the top and you want this thing off it's not going to be too obvious what you're doing but that part's ready to go. So I'm just gonna. What am I gonna do? Keep the decals? I wanna do some painting. Keep them? Toss them? Ah, that kinda an answers my question. I don't need warnings. High energy, blah blah. Don't touch the spark plug. No, I think I'm gonna pull these decals. And we definitely don't care about the French version. No offense to the French, but I don't care out here. So, yeah, I'm just going to clean up the coil a little bit. Repaint this, repaint this, and uh, it'll be ready to go on. And I finally heard back from my starter guy. Uh, apparently he got into an accident, got hurt a little bit. We pray for him. Uh, but I should get that out in the mail soon so we still have snow on the ground the whole idea is to get this done maybe not the hood painted but everything else done so I can actually take it for a ride while there's still snow on the ground I got my switches in finally um, for the headlights and and I went to install it and I realized there was something wrong except I couldn't quite figure out what it was 
So I had to go back to a piece of paper and uh, draw it out. And I forgot about dash lights, like the the back lights on each gauge. So I was, I just I thought an on off switch on off on switch would be enough turn high beams off and low beams but the panel lights messed me up <clears throat> so I had to draw it out and basically if I want the high beams on and the panel light if I want it, the panel light on the low beam as well essentially the circuit all becomes one so regardless which way I flip the switch this becomes all connected <clears throat> and both both high and low are on at the same time so <clears throat> there's one way to fix that throw a diode in line and now when power goes to the high beam it also goes to the panel but it cannot go back into the low beam and vice versa <clears throat> that's one way the funny thing is I got these switches way earlier and they're not much more money <clears throat> and it eliminates the need for a diode because it's basically two switches in one so I got B plus Effectively, this pole and this pole are tied together. And then uh, these two can tie together to the panel light. So if it's off, it's off regardless of position on goes to here off on turns on the light this way and separately I got my high and low so <clears throat> that's what I'll end up doing and the reason the reason they didn't do that when they designed the machine was the idea is turn the lights on and then you've got a hand control for oncoming traffic and you don't have to reach the panel but I don't care about that and I don't want any wiring running down my uh, handlebars so this is my better option and I'm just gonna go with that I think it's like I think the on off on switch was five bucks. I think this one was like a dollar extra. So that's what I'll do. So I got my power in. <clears throat> this side of the switch is going to power high beam, low beam. I use the lighter gauge over to the other side of the switch. And that's just going to power, whichever way it's on, is going to power the two little. Uh, uh, panel lights, so I'm only using 18 gauge for that so Here's the finished product Power in this will illuminate the uh, Panel lights doesn't matter which way you got the switch We'll turn it on and then high beam low beam so Let's uh see if this is gonna work so yellow is uh, let's put it another way brown is power this yellow that runs down that goes to tail light so I'm gonna put hmm, This is my power. What are we doing here? 
whoops, let's get this right. Okay, power. I need to illuminate yellow, so that's black to here. Gee, come on. So yellow traces back. That gives me the bulb here, the bulb here. I gotta go get bulbs. I think I got them in my cabinet. So if I did all this right, and I gotta decide up should be high beam, down should be low. Just think that makes sense. Where is my... So... Looking at this, I got pink and green. Low beam is green. Pink is high beam. Uh, I don't know why I bothered looking at that because it does matter. I'll just flip the switch one way or the other for up and down. So pink and green. That's pink. There's green. So that's how I bypass the original the original switch on off, which is in pretty rough shape. And then the high low beam that goes up here. I can do it all in one switch. So the only thing I gotta do now is I'm going to drill out this hole a little bit, hook it up and test it, throw a battery on. So, battery, ground, uh, so I need to disconnect from the engine. Uh, so this side's ground. This side's power, so I have to disconnect. Oh, easier way. Yeah, I'll hook it from here. So I'll hook up a battery to this one and the ground, and then I can test it. I guess this is it, so uh, if this all works out. this works the way it should then I guess I'm done working on this sled for a while all right so it's so it works off right now low beam high beam so that's all working the way it should and it works with the key off I think I'm okay with that. Oh yeah, of course I'm okay with that. Uh, engine's not running, it can't work. So I guess that's it. I'm just going to install the switch. Uh, put in some bulbs. Make sure they work. And there's nothing... Uh, not quite. I'm going to reroute this wire. That's the kill switch. Uh, I might even put it back in the in the block. I think it came from that block. Figure out the pin out to do that. Um, 
but I think that's it. Nothing more I can do. I still need the choke cable and I, the guy finally gave me a price on shipping for the starter motor. And I don't want to do anything until I get that starter motor and I know it's going to work. Um, once I know it's going to work, I have a spare engine to test against. Then I can pull this motor. Like there's a lot of work to do yet, but I don't want to do anything until that motor shows up. Because if it doesn't show up or something goes wrong, then everything I did was for nothing. So once I get those parts, then it's going to be... I'll just be going hard on this thing get it done. I guess in the meantime, I may as well pull the hood and start prepping it. I don't have my my gun to do any sandblasting yet, but I can get the hood ready. So I suppose that'll be next. I guess I just got to scratch up the ground on the tack. Is, huh, it's not making contact. The speed is a little dim, the tack's a lot brighter. I'm not concerned about that. Not going to be riding it at night, anyways, but I want everything to work, so it does. Oh, yeah, if you're in the dark, you're going to see this. Cool, we're we're getting there. So after waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting some more, I finally got my choke. It's not really choke; it's the fuel enhancement system. And I don't know what I was thinking. I just assumed it would all come complete. It didn't, obviously. Should have known. Yeah, I can steal the old one from the old cable, but I was short. The plunger I was able to find this body, even the spring. I cannot find that other plunger, so I had to go back in line and order this assembly. I hope that's the last of it. I actually found a second assembly that, uh, yeah, that's the same. Minus the spring and again, minus the plunger. So I definitely don't have them. Maybe they were in another box somewhere. The dot maybe got tossed. But <clears throat> All right. So that's as far as I can go with this for now. It's a longer cable system, so routing is going to be, jeez, I don't even know where to begin with this. So i got to route my throttle in, which I haven't done yet, and then I have to snake these guys in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't like these 90s. I wasn't expecting the 90. So somehow this is going to be the harder one. Somehow I have to get that in there. I guess it might not be interfering. So that's that.